Sofar Yasmin and we'll be starting with satellite and radar system and today's topic is GPS global positioning system so this is a lecture in continuation with the previous lecture uh, so uh, in previous lecture we have uh, uh, we have gone through the basics of GPS what is GPS uh, where do we use it what are the constellation of satellites that we use specifically for GPS now proceeding further, we'll be talking about today uh, uh, the timing errors, what kind of errors we face in GPS, what ki kind of GPS we use and how GPS receiver works. And finally, it's applications and few limitations. So before starting with this, uh, uh, let's uh, first of all revise what we have discussed in previous lecture. GPS is global positioning system, right? This is a radio navigation system which is used worldwide for locating any object on Earth or near Earth. Navista was the original name of the global positioning system that uses constellation of 24 satellites and this project was initiated by United States government in 1973. Although initially it was for military purpose, later on it was made available for civilian activities as well uh, after 1980s and uh, United States government provides its services free of cost worldwide. So we all have become habitual to using this GPS. Now in previous lecture we have discussed how this GPS actually works. We basically use constellation of 24 satellites which are placed in medium earth orbit. And from medium earth orbit, these satellites are used to calculate the exact location of an object on earth or near earth. The technique that we use for uh, the location is called as triangulation or trilateration method. So uh, we have seen how distance is actually calculated using GPS and how time is calculated. Uh, distance and time issues we have discussed in the previous lecture. So proceeding further how timing works at receivers. Basically, once receiver has all timing correction, it applies to all the rest of the measurements, right? If there has occurred some timing errors, for that we use fourth satellite that we have discussed in the previous lecture. If three correct measurements gives us the exact location, then four incorrect measurements will give me uh, the correct location. Right? And the mathematics involved behind it was discussed previously. Right? So basically timing is, in, is a critical thing in GPS as even error of milliseconds will lead us to uh, the calculation of the exact location uh, with an error of around kilometers, hundreds of kilometers. So timing is critical in GPS. And we cannot enable every GPS receiver with atomic clocks because atomic clock is an expensive thing. Although our satellites are already, um, they are boarded with atomic clocks. And these are highly precise but are expensive. But to make my receivers inexpensive, atomic clocks are not used. Instead of uh, this atomic clock, we use a fourth satellite. And how it is done? This was discussed in the previous lecture, right? So once we have the error value, that how much error has occurred in calculating the time, that has to be uh, subtracted from, uh, that, has, that uh, value has to be corrected into all satellites. So once the receiver has the timing corrections, it applies to all the rest of its measurements and it allows precise positioning. Once we get the error, that is, uh, the uh, accurate value is calculated, uh, subtracting that error. So one consequence of this principle is that any GPS receiver will need to have at least four channels, right? As we are using four satellites for it, we'll be having, we have to use four channels. That is making our communication uh, a little heavier, right? So it can make the four measurements simultaneously. But for the triangulation to work, we not only need to know the distance, we also need to know exactly where the satellites are, right? So calculating the distance of that body that has to be located is not the only thing, the sole calculation. Uh, 
the satellites which are actually helping us solve the purpose even they have to be located precisely because uh, we know once a satellite is launched into orbit a, a normal communication satellite launched into geostationary orbit it serves for around 15 years and if we talk about uh, the GPS services these satellites usually have a lifetime of seven to eight years right and we know once a satellite is launched into its orbit which is usually elliptical there are various forces that acts on the satellite and that might make that satellite to deviate slightly from its actual path that could be atmospheric drag because of earth's at, uh, gravitational pull or gravitational pull of sun and moon or there there could be some cosmic activities that might shift satellite in uh, slightly from its exact location so even if the satellite has moved slightly from its exact location that has to be corrected before all this calculation is undergone so not only the distance but exact position of satellite has to be relayed communicated time to time right so uh, distance along with position of satellite these two are to be taken care of right so if we summarize our timing calculation then accurate timing is the key to measuring distance to satellites and satellites as satellites are accurate because they have atomic clocks on board right receiver clocks don't have to be too accurate because an extra satellite the fourth one range uh, used for range measurement can remove the errors that was previously discussed now if we talk about satellite position in space how it is uh, known or calculated all the time on the ground all GPS receivers have almanac this has information about the satellite all the necessary information about satellite is already preloaded this is programmed into their computers that tells them where the sky where in the sky each satellite is moment by moment like in mobile communication our mobile when we are not actually calling but it has to send its location to nearby BTS like that uh, the location of the satellite has to be relayed has to be communicated time to time and as it is already programmed in the computers it is every time uh, uh, compared and if there occurs some difference that is uh, reversed back right this is how we remove error with the help of the almanac which is already programmed in the computers so now how do we monitor satellite position orbits constantly monitored by Department of Defense right there is a particular agency of government which is Def department DOD DOD continuously works in this direction they use very precise radar to check each satellites exact altitude position and speed right so we we have to use expensive and precise radar for same this must be written as this radio detection and ranging I hope we are aware with the concept of how radar works it transmits radars they they do usually work with the principle of EM wave transmission reception time calculation and exact location calculation it is used for radio det uh, this is uh, radio detection and ranging it transmits radio waves if some flying object is in the vicinity the reflected back waves are received again by the antenna the round trip time is calculated and after calculation of the round trip time we know the radio waves have velocity equal to velocity of light the half of the distance will give the linear distance of that object so this is called as range calculation so radar is used radar principle is used for the same 
So for uh, satellite location also, we use precise radar, right? Although this is a complete uh, different study, we, we study radar separately. So radar here as a technique, as an equipment is used for exactly locating our satellite. And we do have different categories, variety of radar. We use very precise for, sort of uh, form of radar here, right? Errors in position are caused by gravitational pulls from the moon and sun and by the pressure, pressure of solar radiations on the satellite, which is true. Once a satellite is launched into uh, space, there are various forces which are acting on the satellite. And how it is maintained? We do have a separate um, maintenance uh, techniques which are applied on satellite. We have orb attitude and orbit control, AOCS, which works in collaboration with TTC and M. Attitude and orbit control system. Height and orbit shape. These two are managed. We do have separate uh, systems. We do have iron jets, thrusters, right, small rockets uh, beneath the satellites, which will help our satellite to retain its position, retain the position back. It works in collaboration with TTCNM, telemetry tracking command and monitoring, which continuously tracks our satellite where, where whether it is at its exact location, whether the health of the satellite is okay or not. So these two system, these two are very important subsystem of a satellite communication, right? They, they helps in maintenance of satellite. Once it is launched, it remains in orbit for many years and we generate revenue by selling the services that satellites provides to us. So a satellite has to be maintained in its orbit, in its exact position, right? So AOCS and TTCM works in that and for exact calculation of the position of the satellite, we use precise radar, right? Although these errors are usually very slight because of the height of MEO. We know uh, MEO is beyond 500 kilometers up to 1500 kilometers, right? Uh, or uh, approximately 800 kilometers to 1500 kilometers. But uh, as, as being in MEO, the atmospheric uh, drag, the gravitational pull of Earth is lesser as compared to LEO, low Earth orbit. But still, there is uh, there are effects on it. Uh, so they has to be corrected because timing is very, very crucial thing. Even a millisecond of error can lead us to uh, so much of wrong calculation. So that has to be taken care of. Now, if we talk about monitoring satellite position, once the DOD Department of Defense has measured a satellite's exact position, they relay the information back into the satellite itself. Now the satellite includes the new corrected position, right? All corrections are incorporated. This is why GPS signal is more than just a CETO random code for timing purpose. It, it also contains a navigation message with ephemeris info, information as well, right? Some redundant information, right? So if we, uh, if we summarize the position thing in satellite, to use the satellite as references for range measurements, we need to know exactly where they are. GPS satellites uh, being at MEO, they are very predictable because GEO is uh, at 36,000 kilometers and MEO is, compar is comparatively at lower height. Then minor variation in these orbits are measured by Department of Defense and they are corrected. If we talk about some additional errors, what are other errors apart from uh, the dislocation of satellite? These uh, errors could be assume distance to satellite can be calculated by multiplying a signal's travel time by the speed of light, which is true. As GPS signal passes through the charged particles of the ionosphere, then through the water vapor, we know in ion ionosphere, we, we do have uh, beyond Earth, we do have different layers, stratosphere, troposphere, ionosphere, right? Ionosphere will have densely charged ions, right? There are chances that waves will be reflected back or they will be some, somehow at, get attenuated, right? Here uh, and in troposphere, there are a lot of water vapors, so uh, uh, my waves will get slowed down. 
and this create the same kind of errors as bad clock so it depends on weather condition as well it depends on day and night signals now how do we correct these errors to minimize the errors one can predict what a typical delay might be right that has to be assumed that minimum this much error will occur and that can be uh, you know considered every time this is called modeling and it provides a considerable improvement but with limitations because atmospheric conditions are really typical they keep on changing so it, it puts uh, a challenge for us right another technique to minimize so first technique is making a model or modeling another technique to minimize on these atmosphere introduce error is to compare the relative speeds of two different signals which is called as dual frequency measurement it is very sophisticated procedure and it is only possible when we have advanced receivers receivers like uh, as we know that physics says that light moves through a given medium low frequency signal gets refracted or slowed down so we have to take care of what medium it is traveling through if it is moving through a dense medium then uh, it will be slowed down if it is moving through a rare medium it, it will become a little faster right so by comparing the delays of two different carriers of gps if if we consider l1 and l2 for that we deduce what the medium is right what kind of medium it is and we can correct it unfortunately this requires a very sophisticated because this this variation this gap will be very little so we need advanced receivers sophisticated with which adds on the cost so for limitry uh, so uh, uh, so to overcome this limitation we uh, use such kind of thing in military only where calculation is a crucial thing other sources of error could be our multipath error atomic clock imperfections or there must be uh, some position dilution er detection error or geometric dilution precision we will discuss this in detail there are some intentional errors uh, you know the quality of this uh, GPS signals this was degraded back in 2000 it was called as selective availability the idea was to introduce inaccuracies to make sure that no hostile force or terrorist group is having an access on it so as we have soul body managing it we can introduce error and we can uh, inform the intended groups who, uh, to whom we want to sell the services or to provide the services and prevent it from any hostile source right so what is geometric dilution of precision in geometric dilution of precision uh, it, it basically it magnifies other errors with a principle uh, called GDOP let's see uh, with the picture it will be clear principle this principle is quite simple when satellites are at far positions then uh, the error would be smaller and when they come close the error area could be little large right let's see if I consider uh, uh, like we know that we use at least three satellites and actually four satellites for exact position calculation if these satellites are so close we know that in MEO there are 24 satellites one two three like that it depends on on us which four satellite we choose for calculation if these two satellites are chosen in a way that they are uh, so closely spaced then the this area their common area is little wider if we use satellite which are widely placed then their common area is little small reducing the uh, reducing the chances of error right if it picks satellites that are close together in the sky the intersecting circles that defines the position will cross at very shallow angles that increases the gray area or error margin and if it picks satellite that, that are widely spaced then circle intersects at almost right angles here right and minimizes the error region so good receivers determine which satellites will give the lowest GDOP geometric dilution of precision and those are chosen 
so uh, we have error reasons and we have ways to remove it as well right so if i summarize about errors the earth's ionosphere and atmosphere causes delay in the gps signal that translates into position errors now some errors could be factored out using mathematics and modeling as in the first case we discussed and if the configuration satellite in the sky can magnify other errors right if we if we use widely spaced or closely spaced that depends Although differential GPS can eliminate almost all errors, this is the most famous kind of GPS that we use. We, if, it, if I talk about how uh, my GPS receiver actually works, let's see it in detail. We have a picture for it. This is a signal generation in GPS receiver. This is the L1 signal, L2 signal, the two kinds of codes which are used in civil and military course acquisition code and p code precise code and this is the basic navigation message these are always processed with the pseudo random codes right the data rate for it is 1.023 mbps whereas for p code it is much higher approximately 10 times which is 10.23 mbps navigation message is usually provided as this much uh, which is a lesser data rate and these are the product modulators which are used right one goes directly another with a phase shift of pi by two so we have in phase channel two channels and quadrature channel right for l2 only the in phase channel goes so let's see how it works gps satellites transmits using pseudo random sequence pn codes all satellites transmit a CO code at the same carrier frequency that is 1575.42 megahertz called L1. It uses phase shift key, preferably BPSK modulation, right? Phase shift key, where phase of the uh, carrier is altered with respect to instantaneous value of the message signal, right? And it has only two values, either 0 degree or 180 degree phase reversal. That is my phase a binary phase shift key modulation technique. This is a digital technique, right? The L1 frequency is 154 times the master clock frequency of 10.23 megahertz. The CA code has a clock rate of approximately 1.023 megahertz and the CA code sequ sequence has 1023 bits. So the PN sequence lasts exactly one millisecond. This is the calculation we have drawn from here. The exact values of the frequencies are about 0 0.005 hertz, lower than the stated. It is to allow relativistic effects caused by the higher velocity of satellites in their orbits. They usually move with this much velocity, right? So this is a product modulator here uh, we simply get the l1 and the p code not directly the uh, p code but the p code after undergoing uh, this product modulator through ca code and the navigation message right so with the series of product modulators and summing the output here we get l1 we can see L1 directly comes here plus P. How P? P from here. Just a moment. CA. How CA? CA also through this product modulator goes here. The navigation message also goes here and here. So this will be my L1 output. Here L2, what do we get? L2 through in-phase channel directly comes here and from here we get precise code, the navigation message, navigation message and the precise code. So here we have L2 plus P plus navigation messages. So this is how signal is generated in my GPS receivers, right? 
the C and P code transmissions from all GPS satellites are overlaid in the L1 and L2 frequency bands, making GPS a direct sequence spread spectrum system, right? For long distance communication, uh, uh, we do prefer and where we have to apply encryption or uh, where we have to prevent it from jamming or to prevent from hostile sources, spread spectrum is an efficient method. The receiver separates signal from individual GPS satellites using the knowledge of unique CA code that is allowed to each satellite, right? So this is how my GPS receivers work, right? Now, if I talk about what a different kind of GPSs we have, we have differential GPS. It involves the use of two receivers. This is the most famous one and most common kind of GPS that we use. Here one monitors variations in the GPS signals and communicates those variations to other receivers. The second receiver can then correct uh, its calculations for better accuracy. And if we talk about carrier phase GPS, this is a better kind of GPS. We use here two separate receivers, one to uh, monitor variations and another for actual calculation, right? If I talk about carrier phase GPS, it takes advantage of the GPS signal, carrier signal to improve accuracy. So here accuracy is also uh, improved. The carrier frequency here is much higher than the GPS signal, which means it can be used for more precise timing measurements, right? Another kind of GPS we use is augmented GPS. What is augmented GPS? It involves the use of geostationary satellites as a relay station for the transmission of differential corrections and GPS satellite status information. Here, these corrections are necessary if GPS is to be used for instrument landing. The geostationary satellite would provide corrections across entire continent, right? Differential GPS is the most studied one, most used one. Here, error in position location is bias plus random error. Bias is same over wide area. It is caused by delay in the atmosphere, ephemeris error, etc. Here, a fixed receiver at a known location can measure bias error. Here, radio communication linked to user allows removal of bias error. An extra receiver and data links increases cost here considerably. So this is a little expensive too, but uh, is considered one of the most accurate kind of receiver. It is used to be more essential for civil applications before removal of, uh, removal of selective availability. This is the most essential one, right? Now if I talk about GPS accuracy, for civil the accuracy is approximately that we use in our day-to-day -day life. We follow GPS and we reach certain place and that place would be approximate in the vicinity of 5 to 10 meters, right? But for military, if we have to uh, do bombardment at some place, we cannot be just 10 meter wrong. So this is accurate in centimeters. You can see how, how uh, good these receivers are, right? If I talk about applications, they are used in civil location, that is determining the basic position. They are used for tracking. They are used, first and foremost, used in military. They are used in military. They are used for surveying. They are used for ve vehicular navigation, ship navigation, aircraft navigation. Even the landing aircraft navigation is a separate field. We, uh, the all landing and takeoff, they are controlled by this monitoring. Various kind of radars are used for it. Right, so it has got uh, vast applications. If I talk about limitations, here the receiver must be at line of sight. If my satellite is not able to see which thing has to be located, then that's a problem. It cannot work indoors if the sky is blocked. True. Accuracy in vertical dimension here is lower than the horizontal. Vertically, it is uh, more accurate. And CA code may be vulnerable to interference, but we use it for basic purposes, so that is uh, not encrypted all the time. P code is encrypted, which is used in military. Other options that we can use for navigation is landmarks, 
dead reckoning celestial omega loran sat nav other than navstar other than gps right different countries are developing these india is also developing its own um, radio navigation system so these are uh, just coming and getting improved day by day but still up to date gps is the most famous one that we use in our everyday life these are the references that i have used and that's it for today thank you